If you just received a request for evidence for your O-1 visa application, watch this video to get all your questions answered and figure out what options you may have. Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and I'm an immigration attorney. Welcome back to our O-1 visa series. If you haven't already, please comment, like, subscribe so that we can continue this conversation and so that you can learn more about the O-1 visa if you're thinking about applying. So today we're going to be talking about requests for evidence. Dong, dong, dong. Nobody likes requests for evidence. I don't like requests for evidence because basically it means there's more work for me to do. But, you know, sometimes it does happen. So today this video we're going to discuss in terms of what exactly is a request for evidence evidence and give you some tips and tricks in terms of like how to deal with them so the first thing you need to know about requests for evidence is that they are not actually a denial so no it is not a straight-up denial the officer is not saying that you're not gonna get a visa and just because you get a request for evidence it doesn't necessarily mean that you are gonna be denied it just means that the officer wants more information so what information you're gonna have to read the request for evidence in order to find out the second thing you need to know about requests for evidence is that they could be super complicated or it could be really, really simple. So it really depends on the letter that they send you. So sometimes I've seen really, really simple ones where it's like, oh, we missed the copy of like, I don't know, the passport page of the petitioner or the beneficiary or something like that. Please send us the passport page. So you send that and you're perfectly fine. Most of the time, that's not the case. Sometimes you get a really complicated request for evidence. So basically it's like a six page template that basically says that you don't meet any of the criteria please send us more information and then you're gonna to need to respond to that appropriately the third thing you need to know about requests for evidence is that they are time sensitive. Usually they give you uh, the maximum I believe is like 90 days in order to respond to requests for evidence but you really need to check the date. So every single request for evidence has a specific date where they need to receive the evidence by. Do not send them on the day itself. It has to be received by immigration not postmarked. Totally different. If you do it too late they might not accept the request for um, the response to the request for evidence in the first place. So. Super important, time sensitive, make sure that you send it to them on time. Better yet, if you can send it to them early, that's even better. Number four, the thing you need to know about requests for evidence is that officers are not supposed to be making up regulation. They, they shouldn't be asking you random things about your application. There are only specific things that they can ask for, but they really shouldn't be asking for things that are basically impossible to comply. And there are several cases out there uh, which basically speaks to this kind of thing. But I would say if you get a request for evidence, you might want to talk to an immigration attorney and kind of figure out, you know, is this a reasonable request for evidence or is this not a reasonable request? request for evidence because they would have more experience in terms of dealing with this kind of thing. Number five about requests for evidence is that you can actually withdraw your case at this point. So you can actually withdraw like an immigration case any point up to like when they've made a decision. And the good thing and the, the good thing about that is that if you withdraw your case, there's no, there's no denial. Because you know, if there's a denial, there's gonna be a black mark on your case that lasts for seven years and that's gonna make it harder for you to get the case approved down the road. But in this case, if you get a request for evidence and you feel like, ah, it's gonna be too hard to fight this and you might not win, then it might not be a bad idea to actually just withdraw the case at this point so that way you don't get the black mark on your case and then refile at a later period of time. The downside is well you know since you withdraw the case there's obviously no approval, no visa, you're probably going to have to leave the country. So that's something that you kind of want to discuss with your immigration attorney in terms of like uh, what are my chances of actually winning this request for evidence or not? Is the officer being too demanding? Is the underlying case too weak in the first place? That's something you want to discuss with your attorney and kind of figure out what is the best option for your case. But do know that withdrawal is definitely an option as well so that's in terms of like the five basic things in terms of requests for evidence now I want to go on and give you a couple of tips let's say that you want to actually do try and fight the request for evidence here are a couple of tips to sort of help you through the process and we're gonna go through them now so tip number one is to read the request for evidence very carefully so usually it's about six pages and they go through all the different criteria in terms of what you submitted what you haven't submitted and why you haven't met the criteria. Well, at least they're supposed to do that. I've seen some requests for evidence where they don't even give examples at all and you're supposed to respond anyway. So read it really, really carefully. Try to figure out what exactly they're looking for and formulate a strategy as to like how exactly are you going to be able to meet what they're asking for. Tip number two is to respond to all parts of the request for evidence at one single time. So you're not going to be given a second or third chance. 
This is the only chance you got. So read the entire thing carefully and respond to every single point that they've made so that it's clear from, their, from your point of view and from their point of view that you've given them all the documentation that they have asked for. This is super important and you got to do this right. Tip number three, when you are responding to the request for evidence, you're gonna to wanna to give them supporting documents. And when you are giving them supporting documents, you wanna give them all at the same time. Like I said, there is no second or third chance. You're gonna to wanna to organize your, your documentation so it's easy for them to read and you're gonna give them all at one shot because you do not get a second chance to do that again. And the last tip, tip number four, is to have a cover letter that basically explains why you've met the request for evidence and as well as list the types of documents that you are going to be responding with. You want to give them additional proof and you want to explain in the cover letter why this proof actually meets the point that they are asking for. Uh, so hopefully these are the tips that will get you through your request for evidence. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. As usual, please like, subscribe so we can continue this conversation about the O-1 visa.